Steve Antonucci. We're getting ready to do tops for the Children's Hospital of New Jersey, and Steve's going to show us how to do it. Yeah, so we start with these two by two maple squares, and you know you can grab them like this, and if you got a good chuck, it'll hold. But I always work with uh, round tenons. So my first act. I'll show you in a second, but um, see how good I am at 50 millimeters. But my first act is, you know, the uh, grabbing of a 50 millimeter tenon is a lot more secure than the grabbing of a square blank bottomed out in the chuck. Yep. So it's important you get this from over top. That your jaws are almost closed and that your tenon doesn't bottom out in in the jaws so just, i don't i don't want to make it, yeah and you know that tenon's maybe a quarter of an inch but now grab this way that's really secure and so you know because i don't turn with a towel stock when i'm making it, i want that to be gripped I'll save Bob because normally I just blast this off. What tool are you using now? This is a uh, spindle roughing gout. But I'm close enough. You can see there's four us now. This is the uh, Thompson 3 8 inch detail gouge. This is the uh, best tools in uh, the turning world, right? Best tools by one of the best men. And if I'm out turning somewhere, I have this tool with me. It's one of my absolutely must have tools. Yep. And when I'm making the top, I like to leave that little spot on the bottom. Okay. It just makes it a little bit easier for them to spin if they're a little bit up off the table. Okay. So, this is a Prismacolor marker. Okay. They're really expensive, but they last forever. The colors are light fast, even though this one is probably 12 years old. Light fast meaning? They won't fade over time. Okay. Double ends? They are. So there's a fat side and a skinny side. Okay. And they're alcohol based. So if you use alcohol based and you try to put shellac on this, it would run a little bit. Right? Uh, I believe it would. Yeah. So, and I just come back through here. And Bob and I were talking beforehand about the uh, spiral them or texture them first. Or do you color them first? I am a color them first person. Now way back in the day, when my eyes were better, I would run the colors right up next to each other. But I can't see as well as I used to. And you're purposely leaving a little space in between each color? Yeah, just because I can't see. It'll make two steps down the path a little bit easier. Now, this is a Wagner texturing tool. It's a knurling wheel. And what you want is you want to be perpendicular to the surface. And you're going to push in. And we'll stop here for a second. Came out perfect. Yeah, it's very good. So, yeah, check that out. That is really cool. So my last step on this part of the thing is to come back in and just using the corner of any old skew, 
This one happens to be those brown handle Sears Craftsman. Okay. So. Old tools work great. Especially in old tools hands. Exactly. And the only reason I used this one for this part was I picked it up. So, um, come back in and marking those out just kind of delineates the, the colors a little bit better yeah, spectacular, in, yeah. in the rainbow. Okay. So, now we're going to come back and I just want to get rid of a bunch of material up here. myself close and I come back with that little detail gouge lay the bevel on Quick visual inspection, make sure I'm perfectly round, I'm good. You said before that's the only sanding that you do? That's the only sanding I ever do on these. And it's mainly because you're rubbing the bevel and using very sharp tools. Uh, they could be sharper, these haven't been sharpened in a while, but the bevel really makes a difference. Um, but I do this because when you're all the way out here, this is all spindle oriented. So you can't really get it to be perfectly, because it's flat. Yeah. So uh, it just, it gives it a little bit nicer feel. Uh, maybe you swing around the other side now. So the same thing that we did on the back side, we're gonna do on the front side. color combinations that you can do with these really resonate these rainbow shaped colors and those colors. Yeah. I uh, I don't have uh, an indigo marker. So I'm one short of a uh, a true rainbow but you know close enough. So we'll stop here for a second. Get a close look at that. So there's a little separation of colors. Yep. But now we'll come back and we'll cut those in so that they really get framed and stand out. <laughs> Same basic process here. Using the skew again. Just a little toe of the skew and it helps if you can keep it clean. So every time I do that I kind of wipe it down because otherwise I can't see where it is. Yep. because it gives a defining line and the colors don't bleed on each other. Exactly. Just a one little tiny extra step. Stop it again and you'll see how much sharper they look. Yep, absolutely. Yep. So. <coughs> now we're down to the, the last step, which is just to give it a handle so it can spin. Now the thing on handles, 
is that the thinner you make them, the easier they are to spin. So, I try to aim for somewhere around a quarter of an inch. I'm also going to get two blanks out of this, so I start to form the bottom of the next top, yep. and then I'm kind of going through this. And I want to be cutting downhill. Because we're doing a video, I'll throw a little extra bling in this one. So sometimes I like to put just a little bead. Yeah, just a little bead there. Oh, you're in my light. <laughs> That's better. I was going to yell, focus, focus, but then I realized it was me. <laughs> a little tiny bee. All right, so. Let's sand that up a little bit. Tiny bead the other way. Now it's important at this point, as this starts to get thinner, that if I'm taking a heavy cut and pushing really hard, I'm doing it on something that is supported. So this this back side of the blank here has all the meat in it. Yeah. I can push on that all I want. bottom of the next top. This is beginning of the bottom of the next top. Yeah. So how many times do you think you've made over the years? Well, probably close to a thousand at this point. Yeah. So also a good spot. I want to sand the top of that. Rip it on that bead. So we're down at like an eighth at this point, and we're still spinning real concentric. And now we're down like a sixteenth, and we're still spinning real concentric. Thirty seconds, and we're still spinning real concentric. Yeah. This comes from Monty, right? Yep. Good yeah. lumber, good hard maple. It is Monty, yeah, Monty lumber down in Old Bridge, New Jersey. They they donate this material so that we can make these for the Children's Specialized Hospital in Mountainside, right? Right. Um, and, uh, yeah, every year. Our main event is coming up in March with the the woodworking show, which travels around the country, and the New Jersey woodturners participate by making these tops for the uh, the, the kids over at the hospital. So, so, so there's you know one last little step. I find my paper because I do have that little tiny bump there, and that's that. Let's uh, go give it a give it a spin. Ta-da! That's it, folks. That's how you make a very nice, balanced, and very attractive top. Thanks for watching.